Okay. All right, Noah's going to read the master of all poems right here, so Noah begin. Hold on, I'm putting this cat in his room because he, he doesn't know when to stop. Sit, come here. I'm Noah is being distracted. Room. He doesn't want to read the master of all poems. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Back in. I am back. I had to put him in his room. All right, okay. go. Poetic encryption like ants. Oh, ancients. Ancient <laughs> Egyptian. God, this is going to be so bad. <laughs> this terror and threat to poetic clarity becomes a pet rock for some poets. Words do not count for sure, but some does. But so does clarity <laughs> unless poets to put a mask on. Encryption can be used to put... God, why... This is why nobody called. This is why the teacher purposely did not call on me to read in class. <laughs> this is why the teacher called on me all the time to read in class. You may begin. You may continue. Encryption can be used to mask certain phatic pretensions that poems. This is going to be so much torture. Harbor at times when waxing elo eloquently. <laughs> I what? don't know the word. Eloquently? Eloquently. About some trendy theme or some idea or notion deemed as avant. Ooh, avant? Is that how you say avant that? Avant guard. Avant guard. Avant guard. Avant guard. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Noah? <laughs> 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 if hieroglyphs hieroglyphics were, hieroglyphics were to be readily used in our now advanced world of modernity would they be viewed as god I'm so monotone <laughs> when I read this a oh my god the a purpose a refissimimintito. Oh my god. I can't say that word. I can't even figure that word out. Uh, is it a, a, a renaissance, a code, it could uh, it could be plain nonsense too, or maybe not. In in S. Ellett's The Love of J. Alfred's Profarc, he enchants the... Cap oh my goodness i he actually wrote a final paper about that story actually in my uh, english class so you may continue he enchants and capitates his readers to a Captivates. rare and cap captivates 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 his readers <laughs> to a rare and flavorful 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 taste of verses verse Lear, library, uh, Lear, <laughs> gosh, <I don't> know. <laughs> his words are so like out of here. And if I one might be so bold, if one might be so bold, that is selectively sparing and yet well calibrated with the intermittent sprinklings of surbly crafted visual imagery and. E e eloquent eloquent <laughs> tone alliteration and varied make you got alliteration it's a miracle Huzzah. I got what you got alliteration that's a miracle yes and varied meter rhyme and rhyme <laughs> rhyme and rhyme <laughs> rhythm and rhyme <laughs> rhyme <laughs> Keep reading, Noah, you can do it! You only have half the poem to go! Brufrock? Is that how you say that? Brufrock. Brufrock is... Palpable? Pal <laughs> Palpable? <laughs> With emotion and metaphor, yet detached from a ready explanation of the del delicious power of the words which, with which Elliot... Mesmerizes with mesmerizes his readers with devout cleverness of a peed piper. Hide piper. 
Pied <laughs> Piper, <laughs> shot your face. Yeah. <laughs> One could see the internal footman and hear his snicker and be afraid. One could roll one's t- trousers. <laughs> One could dare to eat a peach. This is why I, I, I was terrible in reading class, at least. Like, I would read one page, and I would totally forget what I did. No, just read. we're already halfway through my time on this clip, so we gotta hurry it up. <laughs> okay, one could dare to eat a peach. One could walk upon the beach. One could hear the mermaid sing. But will the mermaid sing to him? Only Elliot really truly knows the real perfrodican perfor- mean here. Are not such met- metaphors there? God, this is so bad. <laughs> to make us think, to enchant our senses, to play on our fears, to be emotive, and yes, to to ta- the, to tantalize our passions, and yes, to excite our phys- physics psychic physics. psychic psychic what psychic psychic, psychic? yes. I- Psychic type. Psychic yearnings. Okay, yes. Okay, yes, contemplation is always vi- vital. Some poets speak in self-tribal code. Some sometimes artful. Uh, <laughs> that word I can't even figure out. <laughs> Obfuscation. Obfuscation is the real goal, and sometimes maybe not. A cup of a cup a, a cup a, a cup cacophonic <laughs> scramble English dem, demonist do you demonstration demonstrative and pa- passionate words thoughts and emotions all so pure and all so real and all in the poet's mind all so exact and all so real some like the legendary Sylvia 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 Plath. Bring the reader to the forlorn world of lost fate, utter despair, and loneliness. In the midst of such a sad dream world, Plath's lyric poem Edge summons readers to the brink, occurring one week before her untimely suicide. The power and symbolism... symbolism It just throws me off when I have to go down the line. Residence in this, her final poem, point towards a tr- perfect compilation and tragic... Tribalism? Tribalism? Tribalism. <laughs> a blast symbol... A, 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 I am so caught up. I need to stop and gather my thoughts for a second. Plas symbol uh, oh my Symbolo- god. Symbolology? <laughs> That's a word? Symbolology. I didn't know that. <laughs> is both intense and compelling, forming its own sense of incrementation while embellishing a supernatural aurora or of a- immorality. The redouble oh god, what did I just say? The <laughs> the redouble is that say that? What? As the redoubtable redoubtable. Redoubtable Ezra pound in his hue so, so I don't know that word either. It's so a name. Weird. It's like an Irish name. Marlborough and in many of many other in his complex poems personif- <laughs> personifies a certain <laughs> form of of in- <laughs> encryption. With his use of word symbols and word and metaphors, a mix of foreign languages and a definite convulsion of cynic Syntax. Syntax, which makes for an... an <laughs> Intellectual rite of passage at times? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Alright, hold on, just stop for a second. I have to restart this clip. Alright, no, it will go again. <laughs> <clears throat> Pound in Mulberry Lee. Mulberry! Ice. Writes on various levels, begging much pre-knowledge from each reader, while Abilly, Abilly, <clears throat> teasing us with his gnomic, gnomic maybe I don't know gnomic predilection for novel themes, his thirst for the unpredicted and unusual, <laughs> his for 
What did I say? <laughs> you said <laughs> unusual. No, you said something else. Unexpe- unpre- unpredictable? Unpredictable instead of unexpected. Uh, okay. <laughs> his formidable knowledge and language fort. His array of equal. Forte, by the way. <laughs> fort. Shut your face. <laughs> His array of equally woven word tapestries. Woven words and and tapestries. You want to fucking read this? (laughs) And his referential (laughs) and his referential flair for striking aphorisms. Pound does all of this so magnificently, all while forming imagery challenging a reader's sense of understanding, leaving a sense of syntactical encryption writ large, always challenging and never and never ever dull. That is one cup of tea that is reveling in the complex. The profound literary sense to what some may may say is Pound's Janus face proclivity for genius and madness. Pound will not disappoint you, regardless of which bipolar face you ascribe him to him, although contrast and comparison are very important. You may continue, Noah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Keep going, Noah. You can do it. <laughs> How the frick did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kenny. <clears throat> Keep going, no, you can yet do I, it! Yet I proffer that deep thinking and sometimes actually... <laughs> I, I don't know, something just makes me stop and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> don't, try and times, under, don't try and understand result, it! Okay. <laughs> don't try and understand it, just read it, because no one can understand this shit. <laughs> may result ultimately in a true infinite... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. In, what? Only the most pretentious could understand it. <laughs> leading each us, leading each of us to a spirit of greater understanding, and I end with uh, I what? I end with John. It just throws me off because John it's Keats. So hard to under, it just throws me off because the wording is so off and weird. Like I'm not used to reading words like the way they're put like that. <laughs> I end with John Keats. Like who would say that when you trying Keats. to say that fast? I end with John. All right, here we go. No, shut up, shut up, shut up, Noah. Shut up, Noah. I end with John Keats, who has left all of us poets with his immeasurable sense of naturalistic humanism. Humanism. Keats' pursuit of metaphor, nuance, descriptive imagery, and sagos. (laughs) Sagacious. <laughs> I can't even turn out that. Symbology reflect the highest degree of poetic mastery and a strong sense of perspective. Perspicacity? <laughs> Obvious. <laughs> In all his works. Keats also uses poetic encryption with his diction, imagery, thoughts, and verse. God damn it! Synoc. Syncoption? He's quite <laughs> elegant. He's quite. <laughs> He's quite elegant with his varied his I'm sorry. He's quite elegant with his varied and fluent thematic reveries. They're always a joy to decipher while leaving us to bask in their powerful sense of clarity and persuasive meaning. Hold on. Many of Keats' wor- exclamation mark. Many of Keats' works reflect a form of encryption. La Belle de Sam's Merci particularly comes to mind this in this instant as well as his famous ode narratives. And his superb Grecian epic fragment, The Fall of Hyperion, presents the reader with a v- vertible, vertible smorgasbord of, conta- of contrast and imagery, an imaginative view of the classical conflict between the Olympians and the Titans. Noah, do you want to continue or have me keep going? <clears throat> Divining in the complex, chaotic, and unpredictable in our world of er- Arcane, 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 I thought symbolism and imagery reflect the modern world we live in today. Poetic in- encryption is indeed so it like so like ancient in Egyptian. <laughs> Whoa, that's a big word. After all, <laughs> all form their own sense of Im- imagery and word pictures. Hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. 
Anaglossic Anoglitz? <laughs> Analogus. Analogus. Analogus to what we do today. <laughs> the words, images, metaphors, emotions, <laughs> symbols, and symbols in our poetry. Poetic Let encryption is so like ancient e Egyptian. Amen, amen, amen. I win. Thank you very much. Noah, now explain to exactly what this poem is about. Jack shit. <laughs> I can't. I'm an English ma- I I'm personally an English education major. I can't even figure this out. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? They're talking about the John I... Keats, which is a British- Which is an English poet. They're talking about T.S. Eliot, who's an American English poet. Um, what <laughs> else is there? In the here, pinnacle of pretent the pinnacle of pretentious Ezra writing. Ezra Pound, Ezra Pound. What does this have anything to do with hieroglyphics? <laughs> Which well, everyone knows what hieroglyphics are, right, Noah? No, yeah, I know what hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics are. are the ancient Egyptian writing form. That's pretty much how Egyptians wrote shit. Now this story. Hey, now this what? poem is pretty much the pinnacle of pretension. This poem is the pinnacle of all poetry. I don't even know if I could call it a poem. It seems more like an essay. Hey, hey, Alright, this is so going on YouTube. Say bye to everybody, Noah. Bye. Uh, bye, guys. Finn guy? Bye. Uh, Finn guy's just been in here just listening. <laughs> <laughs>